All right, Thought Experiments, an online tutorial series designed to help creative-minded people like you turn your passion into a career. So today we're talking about camera movement. It's an excellent technique in film that's used to add another dimension and layer to your filmmaking techniques. Once you've decided what your shot list is gonna be and how you're gonna frame those shots, then you can go in and decide what kind of movements you wanna add to add another layer of depth to what you're shooting. My good friend Pac-Man, who's an excellent photographer, you can check out a link to his work in the description below, would always make fun of me when we're at shoots. Generally, I'm shooting video and he's shooting photography, but regardless of how I'm shooting, whether it's with a slider, a steady cam, a dolly, handheld, I'm always trying to add some camera movement in. So when I have the camera handheld, he says I'm always on set with the camera doing yoga poses like, no, ha, no. Okay, so once you've picked out your framing and shot choice, which I've already done a video on before, you can click this beautiful woman's face to learn more about that. Now you can start doing some cool stuff with camera movement. Let's first start with the difference between a zoom and a push-in. I hear these terms kind of thrown around interchangeably, but they're really two very distinctly different things. A zoom is a two-dimensional magnification that's increasing the size of the center of your camera's image. A push-in, on the other hand, is physically moving the camera closer to your subject and creates a much more three-dimensional space for the viewer. So this movement can be used in a three-dimensional axis, forward and back, left to right, up and down. Each camera movement has its own unique aesthetic. So now that you understand the basic choices that you have with camera movement, the speed at which you move the camera also has a very strong effect on your viewer. If you have a very quick and abrupt push-in, you're telling the audience, whoa, shit's about to go down. On the other hand, if you have a very calm and controlled push-in, you're telling the audience, hmm, this is interesting. I wonder what's gonna happen here. So hopefully you're starting to understand that each movement has its very own unique and specific emotion or feeling that the audience or the viewer picks up subconsciously when watching your film. Another thing to consider is whether or not you wanna use a smooth dolly motion or a handheld shot. A smooth dolly motion allows the viewer to connect with the subject, whereas a handheld shot has a very external observer feel, as if you were standing next to the subject. Both of these techniques can be used in your film to connect your viewer to a subject as well as an object. And a little trick is to add some foreground with your camera movements. This adds much more depth and space to your shots. The reason a dolly motion feels so much more cinematic than a static shot is because you're allowing the viewer to move through three-dimensional space, whether it's a push-in, a pull-out, a crane shot, a side dolly, and the dolly llama. So with understanding these movements, it's important to know when to add them into your films. A side dolly can be associated with moving through a scene or action about to happen. A push-in can be associated with the importance of a subject or an object or the introduction into a scene. A pull-out can be associated with someone losing power or leaving or the ending of a scene. A crane shot can be associated with the shift in power or a changing of what's going on in your film. <laughs> so the use of camera movement can be used to your advantage to create very specific emotions that your viewer is feeling, whether or not you're telling the viewer, hey, this is important, you should be paying attention to this. Okay, we're leaving a scene. Okay, we're working our way through a scene. You can use all these things to your advantage once you understand them on a deeper level. So. Know the rules so you can break them properly. Get creative with your filmmaking techniques. Subscribe so you can get these thought experiment videos beamed directly into your consciousness and become a creator.